Hey everybody, it is Wayne with Ugly Mug Marketing. And today I have a very special guest, someone coming to us. I don't know how far away she is. If I had to guess, probably a couple of thousand miles from where I'm sitting here in Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, and I'm excited about our conversation today because our guest brings a very unique perspective, specifically to leadership, but also in some other unique areas of business and helping people get their message out. So um, I'm excited for this conversation. I'm really excited to, to kind of pick her brain and get her insights on what she's learned over this last year in working with leaders literally from around the country and probably around the world as well. So Mary Lou Kayser, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Wayne. I'm really happy to be here. Really appreciate the opportunity. You bet. I'm excited about this conversation. So where exactly are you? I, I kind of teased that you were far away. Where are you? Yeah, so I am in Vancouver, Washington, which is right across the river from Portland, Oregon. So the beautiful Pacific Northwest. And what's the weather like there today for you? Cold and very fall-like, like late fall. Is it? Yeah. What, so what's the definition of cold for you? Because here in Louisiana, <laughs> you know, we, we probably have a slightly different definition. Uh, I would say, so it's getting down into the low 30s, um, upper 20s at night. And today feels like it's probably in the high 30s. Wow. Yeah. So that, that's a cold day for us, for sure, here in Louisiana. <laughs> Um, before we dive into the conversation kind of around, you know, what it is that you do and, and who you work with, what's your story, Mary Lou? How did you end up doing what you do today? That is such a great question. And if you've ever seen, there's um, that drawing that gets passed around online on the different social channels where it shows a straight line and then a really squiggly <laughs> you know, line of here's what people say they want. Here's what reality is. I mean, I'm much more of that crazy circle of lines um, scribbled around. I, I have a story I think that's not uncommon, quite frankly. Um, I started my career professionally as a high school English teacher, and I loved formal education and was in that for about 15 years. Um, during that time, I taught both high school and second uh, post-secondary, so the college level. And then I got an opportunity to jump into entrepreneurship or freelancing, as some people like to call it, where I was in charge of my own show. And that was the mid-2000s. It was pre social media as we know it now. And to make a long story short, I have had several iterations of my business since then over the last 15 years. But at the core of everything I've done, Wayne, has been this drive to help people become the best versions of themselves that they can through the leadership lens. How do we show up every day to do our work, uh, to be Therefore, the people that matter to us and to take care of ourselves in terms of our own personal growth, in terms of fulfilling our dreams and not just getting into the that hamster wheel of life and then one day waking up saying, you know, what have I done with my time? Yeah, no, that, yeah. that is, I think, I think you are right. And I, I laugh because the uh, squiggly line <laughs> I, I can relate to, and I, I know a lot of entrepreneurs and, and business owners can relate to that squiggly line of how you end up where you are as well. Um, so you kind of mentioned in kind of the way that I came in contact with you originally was through your podcast, the mm -hmm. play your position podcast. Um, if you don't mind, just kind of share with the people watching and the people listening to this, what your podcast is about and kind of what are some of the, the themes that you cover in your podcast? Sure. So as you said, it's play your position podcast. And the theme is, is about leadership and specifically self-leadership. At the, at the core. And then of course, storytelling. I'm a, I'm a former English teacher, as I mentioned, I love stories and I love people's stories. And so when I decided to launch a podcast in early 2014, my intention was to feature people that weren't going to be the ones that you see all the time. And we can all think of names that we see paraded across the social channels that they're, they're on this show and that show and, and every which way. And they're great. And I love them. I just think that, to be honest, people who are 
have, have raised their hand and said yes to themselves through business ownership, through freelancing, through creative work, whatever it may be, have amazing stories that we can learn from. And uh, <clears throat> for people who haven't heard my show, as you experienced, Wayne, as one of my guests, I use an American football theme to drive the conversation. Again, I'm big on metaphors and I'm a, happen to be a huge American football fan. So the show is broken into three parts where we have kickoff, move the chains and touchdown. And during that conversation, a lot of really interesting stories come out about the trials and tri tribulations that we each face as we suit up in the morning and take the playing field and, you know, again, try to have a life that matters that, that by the end of the day, we say, I left it all. I left it all out on the playing field and it's been a great ride. I'm up to almost 330 episodes and I've had an opportunity to speak with amazing humans like yourself who I never would have met otherwise. So I've loved it. Yeah, no, it, it was a, it was a very fun podcast to be a part of and the, the format makes it very unique and different. Um, but as yeah. you said, it, it, it provides that great framework, which parallels so well to what takes place in the business world. Um, as you kind of reflect back over, you know, the 300 plus episodes that you've done, um, would you say, and again, this may be putting you on the spot, but would you say you've, you've picked up on any common elements or common themes from those who've excelled in leadership positions. Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah. Number one, almost everyone I've talked to didn't set out in a formal sense to become a leader, but every single person was called to leadership and what called them is as different as the individuals, but there was definitely a point in their lives when they knew they, they, there was a path that they needed to follow. And sometimes that path morphs into something else, but by, by answering that call and jumping into it is what has led them to a lot of rewards and not just in a monetary sense, but the intangible rewards, the rewards of helping others, the rewards of seeing something grow that they created. Um, the rewards of, of giving back. And so that would be one thing is that there's a, a certain point when each person did get a call to leadership and it comes at different times, obviously. And then I think the other most common theme is despite the trials and tribulations, each person is at a point in their life where they say, I'm really proud of what I've accomplished so far, and I'm not even close to being done yet. <laughs> no, that, that's an interesting perspective. And, you know, I think so often for, you know, business owners, um, entrepreneurs and leaders who are, you know, in the field every day, it's very tough for us to get that same perspective, right? Um, you have a unique vantage point from kind of getting to peer into, you know, 300 plus leaders and, and business owners and kind of get a bird's eye view you know, if you will, of what's working, what's not working. Um, what would you say when you, when you reflect back on the conversations and the, and the things that you've looked at um, from a leadership perspective specifically, what would you say maybe some of the most common pitfalls that may have come up or that you've heard people talk through as it relates to trying to lead others or lead the organization? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, what comes to mind initially is they get in their own way. So the, the voices in our heads, the doubts, the fears that come up, some people may call it imposter syndrome, um, worried that they, they're not experienced enough yet to do whatever the task may be or having never been in that situation before. So there's certainly that element. Um, another common element is one of my questions is, um, in the move the chains, which is the messy part of the game. It's basically the whole football game is each team is trying to get the ball into their respective end zone to get the points. And if you watch football and I'm sure many of your viewers and listeners have, that is not always easy. In fact, it's never easy. And so each person I've talked with has, has gone into a story about when things did not go according to plan 
and what they did during that messiness of, of life or business, and then how they recovered. Uh, and it's not always what you would imagine it would be. It's not, um, there isn't always a playbook we can turn to when we're faced with a challenge. And yet, because the mission or the vision of what they're doing is big enough, they forge ahead anyway. And through a combination of sheer will, <laughs> uh, some serendipity, some might call it luck, the, um, each person has come out on the other side with a great story to tell. And oftentimes it does turn out to be something they look back on and say, I'm really glad that happened. I didn't like it when it was happening, but I like it when it happened because it led me to this. Mm, that's a, yeah, the squiggly line. The squiggly <laughs> line. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'd like to kind of transition into, you know, so we've talked a lot about your podcast at this point, but that's just one small element of actually what it is that you do in the business that you run or, and the different people that you serve. Um, and kind of as a, it's an awkward segue into that. Are there <laughs> any uh, leadership books um, that you would recommend or that come to mind that, that you think leaders should take a look at? Absolutely. Oh, where do I even start? I have my, my go-to stack right here. Um, so I'm a huge Stephen Pressfield fan. I don't know how many of your viewers or listeners are familiar with Stephen Pressfield. He, I think his uh, most well-known book is The War of Art. And it's not the most obvious leadership book. Uh, it's not one that is going to necessarily make the, the top 10, but it's one that I have turned to again and again. And the reason is because, A, he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to when we, we come up against the D-line, the metaphorical D-line, and we're faced with this seemingly insurmountable uh, force how do we move, how do we keep moving forward? And he calls it resistance. Like we're all going to face resistance and leaders, especially because leaders have a lot of different elements that they're managing, thinking about taking care of at once. So I would recommend anything by him. He's got the war of art, do it, do the work, turning pro. Um, as far as women's leadership, and I'm sure you have some female listeners, I would recommend a book by Tara Moore called Playing Big. And it's a book that I've been working with a group of women to go through. And it's one I've read a couple of times myself. And she really gets into what women leaders face that are elements that are different from male leaders. Um, Stephen Pressfield is really universal. I think men could get a lot out of Tara Moore's, especially uh, men who are leading mixed groups, right? Because most organizations today are diverse, you know, that's part of where we're at. Um, and then a go-to for me when I'm just needing um, that, that touch point is I turn to some old things like Henry David Thoreau's book, Walden, you know, when he chose to go live alone in a cabin that he built with his own hands away from town so he could contemplate. And I think part of being a leader is being willing to remove yourself from the day to day and, and reflect and, and do some introspection, do some writing, do some, some reading that again, brings back into focus. What am I doing here? You know, who am I? Um, how am I showing up? Uh, where are the places that are, are just keep, coming up against that um, I can, you know, figure out or find somebody to help me figure that out. So those would be my three books. Very different, but. <laughs> yeah, for, no, I, yeah. I love it. I love the fact that they're not, uh, you know, they're not what most people would think of when they necessarily think leadership, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I absolutely love that. And what was the name go play going big, playing big. What was the, um, uh, it's um, playing big, playing, playing big. big. Okay. Looks like this. I don't know if you, yeah, playing. Yep. Big. Yep. Got it. Perfect. I love those. And um, so let, let's use that as the, the awkward segue into two <laughs> things. One you brought up in that was uh, kind of the group that you lead of women leaders, women business owners um, that you're kind of coaching and working with. And then the other is I know that you work with authors in terms of helping them get their work 
into the world. So let's talk right. a little bit about each of those and kind of, you know, tell everyone watching and listening what you do in those two areas. Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. So I do, uh, I do have two ways that I, I work primarily with people and the program I have um, for leaders who are wanting to elevate them, get themselves out there in a bigger way, be more visible, um, put their, put their ideas, their sometimes decades of experience into a package, if you will, that, that, can serve them and others. Um, it, my program is called Elevate Your Expertise. And we specifically look at that transition point between going from being a subject matter expert to being a thought leader. And there's a distinct difference between the two. SMEs can be perfectly happy their entire careers doing what they're trained to do. Um, engineers and doctors and um, even marketing professionals can be happy as clams their whole life and, and they don't need to be elevated in any other way because their career is satisfying. But there are people who say, oh my gosh, I've been doing this work for 20, 30 years. I've got this incredible wealth of experience and knowledge. I'm looking to transition out of what I've been doing or maybe because of forces outside our control, like the pandemic, I've been, you know, made redundant or furloughed. And now I'm looking at, I'm not done yet. So what do I do with all this stuff? And not really having a sense of where to begin, because there are a lot of options, including writing a book and writing a book is not for everybody. Um, but for those who are ready, or want to at least explore what writing a book is like, that's where that side of my work comes in is I work one-on-one -on -one with an individual who has created maybe a system or has a certain point of view about a popular subject like leadership, like um, relationships. Uh, I've worked with a, a number of people who the thing they have in common is they have a big idea, they want it in a book, and it is a nonfiction book that is designed to help people transform. So there is a prescriptive element to it. There might be sets of questions that the reader can ask himself or herself. Um, there may be a program attached to it, um, but the book is high quality. Um, it's not the book in a weekend kind of thing. Those programs are great. I have nothing against them. It's just, that's not what I do. Yeah, that, that, kind of what you do in that area and in that work. Um, I can see one of the early parts of that squiggly line back in your education <laughs> days, how that's very useful for this, what you're currently doing. Yeah. Um, and, and then what about, I know you, you mentioned, I don't know if that's something that you do formally or if it's more informal, the, the group of ladies you said that you're meeting with and you are going through the book together. Is that something that's a, a formal program or is that something? It is. More? No, it's a formal program and um, I offer it, twice a year. So we're going through the fall version right now, and it will be available again in 2021, um, starting in, I believe, right around late February. And um, yeah, it's, it's also small. It's not one of these giant things where you jump on and there's like hundreds of people. Uh, those have their place. And again, I've been, I've participated in those and they're really valuable, but this is the nature of the work is lends itself to a smaller cohort where there's those relationships can be built. Um, people can feel a sense of um, security within the group that what we talk about isn't going to be blasted all over the place and they can really dive in and do that introspective work I was talking about with Thoreau um, mm. on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So who, who is, who's the ideal person for that group? You know, who, who's the ideal person? The ideal person is somebody who has been in some line of work for at least, I would say, 15 years, uh, 20 years seems to be the average, and they are looking to exit corporate. That's, uh, I, get, I get women like that who've they've done the corporate route, and it's been great, but they're ready for something of their own. Um, 
there, there is a level of professionalism, meaning, you know, someone has been doing some kind of work for a number of years. It may have, within that had a few iterations of things because that seems to be more common today. Is it's very rare to find somebody who's been doing the exact same thing for 20 or 30 years. Another is people who are retiring from a more formal job, but again, know they're not done yet and want to figure out what do I do with all of this? I don't want it to just, you know, not help um, the next generation. Um, and there is definitely a leadership element to it. So the people who are in the cohort now, they're business owners, they're ex-corporate, they're, um, you know, again, at that professional, that professional level with, with some good chops behind them. Yeah. And that's great. And here in just a, a few minutes, I'll ask you kind of where people can go to learn more about uh, that, your podcast and, and other stuff as well. So you can give us that link. Um, and in your business, um, are, is there one other area, one other component where you work within or is there, are those the, the primary two? I do have a third way of uh, working with me. Again, it's a one-on-one, -on -one. it's an accelerated coaching program around leadership. And it's specifically for people who it, the, I call it inflection point and coaching because we come along in our lives at these different inflection points when things are shifting and changing and they often come about fairly quickly. And we realize we've got to do something differently. Um, and it's almost like we're being thrust out of one area. And now the, the sun is shining in our eyes and we're blinking and, and thinking, I'm excited, but I'm terrified. I know there's something next for me. I'm not exactly sure what that is. And so I work with an individual to look at them and where they're, they're at in their business, if they are entrepreneurs or business owners, and also if they are, again, professionals who may be at a career inflection point, and they really just need that one-on-one -on -one intense, not in a uh, overwhelming way, but just focused, highly focused, structured process that helps them come out on the other side, being clear, knowing, okay, I, I know what I got to do now, instead of what am I, I don't know. And then spinning your wheels, which is nobody likes that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And what's so interesting about that is I, as I hear you explain that program and kind of describe that program. And again, this is just my interpretation. So you, you may not like the way I interpret this, but what I pick up on is you really help them in moments where self-leadership maybe in a different direction than they're used to um, is kind of where you bring insight and guidance. So the way I would interpret that is they may have been very successful in a certain path or field career and led well in that. But as they are at, like you say, the inflection point or an inflection point, um, they're really not sure how to lead or lean into that. And that's where you come along and help guide them. Is that mm. semi accurate? That's, exa that's exactly right. For example, I worked with a a woman from Scotland um, earlier this year in the, in the sum, over the summer who was at that point, she, she had done some, she has a business, but she'd been engaged with other companies and it really wasn't her own thing. She hadn't put herself out as the leader of that business. So she had a nice foundation behind her, but she was standing in that space you just described with, you know, what do I do with this? And, um, it was so, it, it had, things has happened so quickly that um, she, at, by the end of the engagement, she just looked back and said, I can't believe how, how far I've come. And that's, it's not for everybody, but for someone who is at that place or about to, you know, sometimes we don't know when it's going to come along. It just suddenly shows up and like, what do I do next? That's where, and it's, it's so specific and niche. <laughs> It's, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like not this big general thing. It's really for that specific point in a person's trajectory. No, that's great. It's helping them get, get a little bit of clarity in, in, in the squiggly line, so to speak. Exactly. So they're not that. so overwhelmed by the squiggles. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Mary Lou, kind of as we wrap up, um, are, is there any specific question or anything that you would want to 
a question maybe that I didn't ask or something, piece of advice or words of wisdom that you would want to leave people with? Ooh. Um, Not to put you on the spot, but to put no, you on the that's, spot. No, <laughs> that's quite all right. I guess the question I would put out there is, um, what are you waiting for? If you're sitting on something, a dream, a goal that's big and a little bit scary, whether it's writing a book or launching a business or investing in some new online assets, like what Wayne's company does with Ugly Mug Marketing, you know, really bringing your, bringing your brand, your persona, your being to the world in a bigger way. You know, what are you waiting for? Yeah, that that's great. I love that. Um, I don't know if I wrote it here. Yeah, I did. So in my notes uh, yesterday, and it ties in directly to what you said, uh, I was reading something and I jotted this down. It's a quote. It said, uh, you pile up enough tomorrows and you'll find you're left with nothing but a lot of empty yesterdays. Mm. So I think that ties in directly to what you're saying that um, we can't keep putting things off till tomorrow, or we will end up with a bunch of empty yesterdays. So, um, and if I could add one quote, I I just thought of it as you were talking it, um, that I think is applicable. It's by one of my favorite American philosophers, the late Jim Rome. He says, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. I I love that quote. And I love Mr. Jim Rohn. I love the, uh, (laughs) the the girl scout cookie story. And for anybody watching this or listening to this, who doesn't know that story or who Jim Rohn is, it's definitely worth taking a look and, um, studying, studying what he taught. He's a, he's a legend. Well, Mary Lou, where can people go to learn more about you, your podcast, and, um, maybe how y'all could work together? Sure. So my main site is maryloukaser.com, M-A-R-Y-L-O-U-K-A-Y-S-E-R.com. And you can access everything there, including a link to the podcast where you can read more about Wayne if you don't know what he, and listen to his episode. It's a great conversation. Awesome. And we will put a link. So for those watching or listening, you can find the link to Mary's website, Mary Lou's website. And go check it out. I highly recommend it. Um, I know that, you know, as everyone watching this knows, we don't, we don't often have a lot of guests on our page. Um, It's not something that we do on a, you know, too often basis. So when we do have someone, we bring people on that we really think will benefit you. And we hope that, you know, this conversation today is beneficial for you. And that if you're at one of those points, or, you know, as Mary Lou explain kind of the three areas she works in that you would look her up, check out her information. Mary Lou, thank you so much again for taking time out of your day to visit and share. Thank you, Wayne. This has been really, really fun. You bet. Thanks again.